Hey guys, this is NHSTL06, hello, and welcome back to Let's Play Fire Emblem, Genealogy of the Holy War. Last time we did a lot of arena grinding, and it actually paid off quite a bit. A bunch of our characters got some nice levels, and we were able to make some nice gold. So let's go ahead and begin using the sortie function of the castle menu. Begin putting out our units, the way we can get this chapter going. Gonna take out that mountain thief with Sigurd. He won't even actually get to the village by the time that we make it out there. Arden is going to be used to guard. He only has 1 HP, and he's pretty useless in this chapter because he can't move. He doesn't have a horse. He's slow. His movement is just not up to snuff. So he's just going to guard for us. Um, and this first turn is really uneventful because you're just leaving the castle. There isn't a lot that happens. We're not even going to come into contact with any of the enemies on this first turn because their movement and ours are not large enough to actually have that happen. So, realistically on this first turn, you can go ahead and put your units whichever way that you want to, it doesn't matter. I recommend putting them out with as far of their movement as possible, or close to it, because that way you can just be better prepared to place your units when it comes time to actually face the enemy. Gonna have Alec equip the steel sword, give him the best chance to succeed. Your steel, or not your steel, sorry, your sword fighters in this chapter are gonna be really useful because there's a lot of axe fighters and it's nice to have them soften up some of the enemies to feed some kills to the likes of Azel, Medir, and Ethlin. So hopefully Azel will get a chance to have some more kills. He's a little bit behind because of his lack of success in the arena. The last two people that I'm going to put out are Finn and Quan, and I did this for a reason. Um, if you have Quan talk to Finn, you can trigger a special conversation, which is very beneficial on Finn's behalf. So let's go ahead and see how that comes out. This song is really great, by the way. No, him saying take this lance is a bit misleading. He doesn't actually give him a lance, but he does give him strength, skill, and a defense boost, which is really nice. Um, I think Finn as a whole is one of my more favorite characters in this game, and this just makes him better. I mean, it, it's, it sets him above your other cavaliers. I mean, I guess it's kind of hard to call him a cavalier because he can only use lances, but I mean, look at him. He's got 11 strength now, 11 skill, and 9 defense. I mean, that's pretty awesome. He's only level 7, so he's doing really well. I'm not exactly sure what his uh, average growth rate is at this point, but, I mean, with that speed running, having 17 speed, that's just crazy. It's a great character. So we're going to go ahead and let the, the enemy take their turn. Like I said, this turn is really uneventful insofar as what the enemy is going to do. But that's not all that this turn has in store. And there's that mountain thief. Now here's where things really get good. Now who could that be? Is that... That's Lady Ideen. Well, would you look at that. And it appears as though this is... the youngest of the three princes of Verdane, Prince Yamka. I, I like to say it like that, because I think Jamka or Jamka sounds stupid. So I'm going to say it with uh, kind of like the <laughs> Yamka. I don't know. Almost sounds like Yamcha. Um, but yeah, I, I think I'm going to say it like that as long as I remember to. And I know for a fact that I'm not going to be able to continue to pronounce Adine or Idine the same way twice. So anyway, he goes and kind of betrays his father. I mean, it, it's betrayal in the truest sense of the word that he's going against his own family ties. But he's doing it for the greater good. He was able to rescue Lady Ideen from Gandalf, not Gandalf, Gandalf, and in doing so, he was able to also save Dew, which was a friend of Lady Ideen's. So, good for him. He's a good guy. We'll be looking to see from him later. 
and Prince Gandalf was all the wiser. He was not going to be fooled by his younger brother. I mean, when your prisoner of war gets taken away by someone in your own family, that's crappy to say the least. At the beginning of every turn, because he's on a castle, Arden is going to gain 7 HP, which is really nice because in the event that we get into this chapter and it becomes later on and all of our characters are down around this area, we might need to uh, have somebody to defend our castle. So let's go ahead and take a look at Lady Iodine. You'll find that she's a, she turns out to be a really great character and she's very useful at this point in the game. Having another healer is always really nice. So I'm going to go ahead and show her stats on another one of these cards that I've made. Hopefully you'll see that her stats are great. Um, she's a level 3 priestess and she comes with a men's staff. She's got 13 magic. Now, looking at her growths, you'll see that her magic growth is pretty low, but I mean, she has a base 13 stat in magic, so realistically, she doesn't really need all that much magic to begin with. Um, I'm not exactly sure what her, her caps are, but 13 magic for a level 3 character is pretty sweet, and that men's staff will make it all the better. I'm actually going to probably wind up trading staves with her and Ethlyn, so the way she has heal and Ethlyn has mend. And it says restores most HP, that's a little misleading. Mend works the same way here as it does in other games. 20 plus your magic to heal. Now she can talk to Ethlyn, like I said, so you should do that because that gets Ethlyn a really sweet staff later on. She's got 5,000 gold and she's got a B in staves, so she's super useful at this point in the game. She is a great character and she's got minor Ulir blood, so as you can see, the little picture next to Ulir is a bow. And we might have an archer on our team that would be a good fit for a lover for Aedine. I'm not sure who that could be. They might... Uh, it's weird. It's like, I feel like somebody with green hair and bows would be perfect, but I don't know who that is. Huh. Well, maybe we'll find somebody for her eventually. The next character that we have on our team is Du. He is a level 1 thief. And to... To find do in one word, it would be that he sucks. Now, why does he suck? As you can see, he's only got 3 strength. His defense is 1. He's only got 28 HP, but he can dodge with the best of them. He's got 15,000 gold. He's got 6 move and 3 innate skills. Um, I thought Aiden had skills. I guess not. Uh, so, as you can tell, he has a lot of promise. His growth rates aren't that bad. But he has a special use. Now what makes Dew useful is the fact that he can steal gold every time that he attacks somebody. So every time that he hits somebody, he's going to get 1,000 to 2,000 gold, which is super useful. And thieves are the only characters in the game that can pass gold on to anybody. Like I've said before, gold in this game, everybody has their own individual pot, and they can only trade if they have a lover. So, And he has Solar Sword. Every time you hit somebody successfully when it triggers, you get your HP back and bargain. You can buy things for half off, which is great. So giving Dew lots of money is really nice. You can pass along funds to your characters in the castle, and in doing so, they can be more free to buy the things that they want. He's already got three times the normal amount of gold, and some characters only start with 2k, so, you know, that's almost 10 times as much. So we're going to have do visit this village down here. This is actually a really risky move, but I think that it'll pay off. This is a little bit of interesting exposition here. Talking about the likelihood of King Batu to raise a war. It always seems like in Fire Emblems that if there is a good-natured king or a Marquess or whatever, and then they start acting out violently, attacking other countries, there's always something, a, you know, something behind whether it's like a magic wizard or a spell being cast, whatever it is. So it appears that some dark wizard, Sandima, Santorum, whatever, uh, has been manipulating the king. So we'll find out later what that has in store. Now putting dew on that town right there is good for now, but I'm going to try to get him to that forest. I'm actually only one square away, so I'm going to need to get dew to that forest as soon as possible. Once he gets to that forest, his evasion will be so high with the 20% boost that the axe fighters around here basically won't be able to hit him and he'll be able to 
occupy them for a little while until we can make our way over there. Now, that we're headed over to our side, these next two turns, including this one, are high intensity, I guess. This part of this chapter is very tough to do right because of this guy right here. This is Kinbois. He is one of the Verdane princes, and he is tough. As you can tell, he's promoted already. He's a warrior. He's got 50 HP. This game loves to just shell out HP. 14 strength with a silver axe that has 22 might. His attack stat, if you can see in the upper right, 36, guys. That's enough to take out pretty much all of my uh, non-weapon triangle advantage fighters in about one to two hits. So we're going to need to take him out. But first, let's have Sigurd take out this Mountain Thief. We're going to make sure that we want to get all the villages in this chapter as much as we can. I don't know if we'll be able to rescue all of them with 100%, but we've already got two of them. So that's a good sign. There's actually some items that we'll worry about later on in the villages. There's actually quite a few neat things in this chapter that can happen if you were unaware. So, our priority in this chapter right now is to begin placing our units that would be the most effective against our axe fighters here. So, those people that I think would be good choices are someone like Alec, Noish, Lex wouldn't be a bad choice with his high defense. And coupled with the fact that Lex doesn't have an innate skill like Pursuit to give him the ability to attack twice, he shouldn't be killing anybody, which is also beneficial for a character like Azel. Without killing your characters, or killing the enemy with your characters, you're given the opportunity to train your characters. Now, the way that I'm positioning my characters is that it forces the enemy to fight on the road. So that gives them a 10% decrease in their evasion, which gives us a better chance of hitting them and not being hit at the same time. So try to place your characters on the trees, or on the meadow, plain, whatever it's called, so that way the enemy is forced to fight on the road. Now, you also have to be careful because these guys like to gang up on you. I think the enemy focuses on trying to take out your characters as much as possible. There are two functionalities of the AI in this game in which they will go for characters that either A, can't counterattack, or B, they'll go for characters that they're going to be trying to knock all their HP out. So that's kind of tough. Um, it, it varies from time to time, but it seems like for the most part the enemy will try to go for the kill as often as possible, and they love to attack your healers. So somebody like Ethlyn, you got to keep her safe. Uh, I like to put all of my weaker characters out of range, and then just put all my characters that I'm planning on attacking with in the range of these guys. It lures them in, but only some of them, because I know for a fact that the guys that are in the back row can't get up here to attack most of my units. So instead, the guys in the front will feel obligated to attack. In doing so, they'll get mowed down by my units, hopefully not killed all the way, because that way I'll have a chance to give Azel, Madir, and Ethlyn the chance to pick up some, some easy cleanup kills. So like I said, here we go. The first wave of these guys is going to come in. Lex is a good choice. You should make sure, like I said in the last video, that you don't sell his weapons. He'll need them for this chapter. And I'll explain why later. Probably not in this video, but you'll see why it is important for him to have all of his... Uh, uh. See, I would normally be really okay with criticals, but... See, I, I, I don't like the idea of my characters being too well trained in the arena that they just start mowing down everybody. It's not often that Noish would do that, but the thing is, is that Alec and Noish aren't really endgame material, so... You know, I kind of want to avoid making them too good, taking kills from other units. However, Quan gets a level up here. He gets strength, speed, and defense, which is awesome. Just what he needs. Quan is a good unit all around. You can't go wrong with Quan. I mean, he is a pre-promote, so what do you expect? He'll be just be doing his thing. So now, all these axe fighters are going to start... They're crowding around with dew. Now, like I said, this might be a little concerning to you as the player, but, like I said, the towns give the same evasion bonus as a forest. So those guys are barely going to be able to hit dew even if they can. But if they do hit him, whew, you're in for a world of trouble because those guys can do 20 to 30 damage, and there isn't a way for dew to heal himself except for Lady Idine. But 
She's going to be heading into the forest. She needs to get out of here. So like I said, we have to get due to that forest as soon as possible so that way he can begin escaping. But in order to do so, he's got to be up one more square. So I'm going to put him right here on the town. He's going to get the same evasion bonus as he did before. So you don't need to worry about that. And while he's doing that, Ideen is just going to escape into the forest as far as possible. Um, I guess that's kind of like the uh, little mechanic of this chapter is all about when to utilize forests and whatnot. And not to mention the fact that they even mentioned that Verdain had a lot of wooded areas in the country. So I think this is a really nice touch. You know, the things that they mention in that pre-chapter exposition are actually true when you actually get to see the game map. That's partly why this game is so cool. I wish that I would have given it a chance sooner, but I didn't actually do that when I was younger, so I'm glad that I'm getting the chance now. So, now that I'm older, I can appreciate it more for what it is, because this is definitely one of the best Fire Emblems that I've ever played. So, this turn is a very tricky turn. We have to make sure that we're playing enough defense that we can hold off all these archers and axe fighters, while at the same time making sure that Ken Bois doesn't kill us. He is very tough, and... If he hits you with that Silver Axe, you can pretty much just guarantee yourself having a reset. The best case scenario is that he attacks you with your hand, with his Hand Axe. I'm going to go ahead and start off this turn by having Medir clean up one of these guys. Medir is actually not a bad unit. I would say that... I mean, it's kind of strange that this... I mean, I guess I shouldn't call it strange because it was probably commonplace at the time. That this game would be giving you... A nomad. That's basically what he is. What he has. What he is in comparison to the other games, gives you a nomad early on in the game. But I mean, I like it. I like him as much as you know. I better than a regular, just an archer who would be on his feet without a horse. So the mounted aspect of his character is definitely very useful. So we've got one more guy to take down, but we still have to be very mindful of Kinbois range. I'm checking very carefully here to make sure that if Azel was to come in and take off, take out, sorry, take out this axe fighter, that he would not be in Kinbois range. It's very close that he is in his range, but not quite. So, because he's not in his range exactly, he should be safe to avoid a hit. You have to be very vigilant, which I haven't been in past videos and I did get called out for it. Um, and you know that's just kind of how this goes. If you're not paying close enough attention, you're gonna miss out. So Azel's gonna get that kill and a level up. Um, unfortunately, Azel's not really turning out how I'd like him to. He hasn't gained a point of magic yet. I don't think. Maybe I think he, maybe he got one, but he's got a 40% growth, so that's a little disappointing. His bases are okay, but if he wants to keep up, he he doesn't ever get a horse at least at, at this point. So. I mean, maybe when he promotes, I don't know, but as of now, he won't be, so if he wants to keep up, he's really got to start pumping out magic stats. Just going to keep checking Kimbois' range. You should organize your characters accordingly. Make sure that anybody that has a weapon triangle disadvantage, like Quan and Finn, you keep them the F out of the break room, because they'll just be demolished. It's a wise idea to put your sword fighters or those with high defense in kind of a decoy position so that way they can lure in Kinbois and that way you can just attack him at your leisure on your own turn but that doesn't always work so my strategy here is to focus really heavily on trying to get him and those other axe fighters to target Noish and Alec because they have the weapon triangle advantage if I can put them on a plane or maybe a, a tree forest, they would have a good opportunity to evade their attacks and maybe do some counterattack damage without killing. So everybody else is going to get out of here. I'm going to use Lex and... Let me see. Yeah, I'm going to use Lex and Alec to buffer Azel. I think he should be okay. They'll probably go for those two instead of him anyway. And any unit that you don't want to get attacked in this turn, pull them away. On your own turn, you can attack and then use the extended range of your mounted units to get out of the way. That's fine. But on this turn, you have to play defense. That's what makes this game a little bit different. You can't just go all out, barrage, throw your units in there. It's better to play it safe and, you know, give the enemy as little of an opportunity to hit you as possible. That was a little unfortunate that that guy hit me. Um, 
I'm starting to think it would have been a better idea to put Alec in the trees here. I'm starting to get a little concerned. Because I know that archers don't have the best accuracy. Okay, that one missed. That's good. I don't think this guy has even got a chance to hit Sigurd. Yeah, he's got 12% hit. He's not even going to come close. Sigurd's great at dodging anyway with his high speed. Alright, come on. Just got a couple more to go. Oh, boy. Yeah, I definitely should have put him on that tree. Oh, crap. See, this is what I get for not thinking all that all the way through. I mean, th my plan here with Noish was solid. Having him on this tree was great to give him an extra 20. I think Alec could have definitely used that extra 20. 20, 20 to Alec's already 36 evasion would have raised him up and over 50. Oh. So he... Oh, my gosh. Look at this. He didn't even attack us. That is awesome. Oh, what a relief, guys. That is crazy. And that just makes it all the easier for next time. We'll take him out. So let's go ahead and see at the end of this video. Let's see what Du can do. That's funny. He actually attacked... I'm so that's the leader of their group, and in doing so, he gets 2,000 gold. I think he get, it ranges between 1 to 2,000, depending upon the caliber of the enemy that you're fighting. But he can get that every time that he has a successful hit, which is awesome. He's a good way to net him some gold, and... I mean, you're going to have to start pumping kills into him. But anyway, guys, uh, that's all that we got for today. Whew, that was a risky turn, but it turned out for the best, guys. I've been HSD06, and I'll see you next time.